for joining us. I'm John Oliver. Just time for a quick recap of the week, and we begin with Egypt, or as ISIS calls it, next. <laughs> Egypt is currently in the throes of a serious economic crisis, and their leader, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, has not been handling it well. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, he unveiled a new public housing complex, which should have been great news, but he didn't strike a particularly appropriate tone. Abdel Fattah el-Sisi arrived on a red carpet that stretched over two miles. <laughs> Soon after the extravagant arrival, el-Sisi made a speech about cutting government subsidies, claiming the state could not continue to subsidize water and electricity. Wow. <laughs> Strutting down a red carpet, which reportedly cost $200,000 on the very day you plan to tell people to use less water. The only less sensitive way he could have arrived was via log flu. <laughs> so, so this week, El Sisi tried again to boost Egypt's economic spirits by launching a new development strategy called Vision 2030, which frankly wasn't ideal, as that name is already synonymous with vision being not quite perfect. <laughs> and, and wait until you hear some of the details of the plan. We are a nation of 90 million. Just think about it. If only 10 million of us wake up every day and they donate by SMS one Egyptian pound, just one for the sake of this homeland. That's 10 million pounds a day. Yes, part of El Sisi's solution was, hey, why don't you text me money? <laughs> he, he's begging for public support the way Paula Dean begged people to keep her on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Although I will admit, his plan nearly had one very intriguing option. For myself, I can say, seriously, if I may be sold, it's OK for me to be sold. OK, then. Selling yourself for the country, you are pitching an amazing sequel to Indecent Proposal. <laughs> A man tries to save his country the hard way. <laughs> and credit here to the Egyptian people who channeled their anger into setting up an eBay page offering the sale of a used field marshal <laughs> in decent condition, which honestly wouldn't be the dumbest thing ever to be sold on eBay. After all, last month, some idiot paid $106 for possibly the largest raisin bran flakes in the world. <laughs> and let me just say, that idiot is very happy with his purchase. <laughs> but thank you, thank you. But with all, with all the turmoil Egypt is in at the moment, what El Sisi needed to do was reassure the country he had everything under control. But again, I am not sure he struck the right tone. And I'm telling all Egyptians that uh, don't listen to anyone except me. I'm, I'm serious. Don't listen to anyone except me. Don't listen to anyone but me. I'm serious. It is not good when your country's leader sounds like a frightened substitute teacher. <laughs> And just like a substitute teacher, you have a feeling that El Sisi is going to be replaced very, very soon. <laughs> uh, but let's move on to Guantanamo Bay, uh, the Hotel California of prisons, <laughs> in that you can never leave, and like that album, it is a permanent stain on America's reputation. <laughs> the president unveiled what he claimed was a major new plan this week. Today, the department is submitting to Congress our plan for finally closing the facility at Guantanamo once and for all. I don't want to pass this problem on to the next president, whoever it is. That's a laudable goal. Guantanamo is like a 37-year-old who's still trying to be a singer-songwriter. <laughs> it's time someone shut that down. You can't just pass the problem on to his next girlfriend, whoever she is. <laughs> but if the president's speech sounded familiar at all to you, it may be because he signed an executive order just two days after taking office to close Guantanamo. And look at him back then. So young. So hopeful. Like a boy band in the 90s signing their first record contract while Lou Pearlman salivates nearby. <laughs> and year after year, he has made the same promise. I have ordered the prison at Guantanamo Bay closed by early next year. Make no mistake, we will close Guantanamo prison. I still want to close Guantanamo. As president, I have tried to close Gitmo. I will continue to push to close Gitmo. It's time to close Gitmo. That's why I will keep working to shut down the prison at Guantanamo. Holy shit! <laughs> Just look at him then and now. The president and Guantanamo Bay are aging together like the couple from Up. <laughs> and it's starting to seem like Obama might be the wife who dies first. But, but I hope, I hope the president does not think 
the seventh year is going to be the charm because the Republican leadership stance can best be summed up by a video Senator Pat Roberts released. This is what I think of the president's plan to send terrorists to the United States. Okay, okay, well, first, sick shot. <laughs> Although, technically, that could mean you think the president's plan is nothing but net, so maybe work on your messaging. But the law is actually on Senator Robert's side. In 2010, Congress banned the use of federal money to bring detainees into the country, and just three months ago, they tightened those restrictions. So the president's speech this week was pretty much a symbolic gesture, like saying, let me help you with the dishes at the end of a party. If you hand me a sponge, I swear to fucking God, I'm never coming back to your apartment. <laughs> And while the president's determination to get this done is admirable, you have to wish that he'd thought this closure through more fully in the first place, because the lack of a concrete plan was painfully obvious from the very day he signed that executive order. Guantanamo will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. We will be... Uh, is there a separate uh, executive order, Greg, with respect to how we're going to dispose of the detainees? Is that uh, written? We'll a process. That we will be setting up a process uh, whereby this is going to be taking place. Wait, wait, wait. Who the fuck is Greg? <laughs> and why are you asking him now? I have to say, when it comes to dashed presidential promises, President Obama's mission accomplished might just be, you got this, Greg, right? <laughs> Greg's got it. And now, this. And now... Basketball enthusiast Pat Roberts spends 12 minutes of Senate time fantasizing about playing one-on-one -on -one with the president. Everybody knows the president's a very good basketball player. I would emphasize to the president uh, bounce the, bouncing the ball to him on a, just a bounce pass and say, your ball, Mr. President, the ball's in your court. And he would probably go to the left corner and sink a three at about that time. I would probably be dribbling a lot, or trying to. And then after I shot, and missed it, and I'd say, your ball again, Mr. President. By that time, the president has scored a couple of layups and two more jump shots. By that time, the president probably stole the ball and scored another layup. I'm still on my second shot on the free shot. By the way, I just scored a hook shot, Mr. President. That's the end of the ball game. But it is not the end of the debate. Moving on. Our main story tonight, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, is Donald Trump. And I say that, I say that knowing that every time his name is said out loud, he has a shattering orgasm. <laughs> and look, look, we have mostly ignored Trump on this show, but he has now won three states, has been endorsed by Chris Christie, and polls show him leading most Super Tuesday states, which is a big deal. Since 1988, every candidate who's won the most states on Super Tuesday went on to become their party's nominee. So